before we go, can we mention some of the guys in the roster we didn't talk about last time? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Ray Mysterio. So great and so sweet. And, um, you know, he just, he's reserved too, you know, he's just such a family man and you can see it. And, you know, his kids weren't on there when we were there, but, um, you know, he just always spoke of his family and how special it was. And he always, you know, congregated with Chavo and Chris and, um, amazing mind for the business. Um, and he kind of was in and out when I was there cause he was having some knee issues and stuff like that. But, um, he was so gracious. I had, um, well, Judas, you remember Judas, Brian, um, his nephew was a big Ray Mysterio fan. So Ray signed a, um, t-shirt, one of Ray's t-shirts oh, wow. to him. Wow. And then I took a picture of him signing it. So Ray let me do that. Um, and we sent it off to Daniel. So, um, just gracious enough to let me kind of, kind of do that for one of his fans. So good dude, really good dude. Legend, of course. Thankfully hey. I'm off the same already. <laughs> yeah. Um, who else? Uh, JBL. Um, he was kind of on the way out when we were there, but he loved the boys. He loved their wrestling style. He loves that hard hitting. So he was very much in giving them feedback to kind of stay true to that, that greaser gimmick and like that, just the fight of it. So, um, he worked with them a lot. So, um, he was a commentator for the first part of when we came in. So, um, really good guy. I just saw him, um, when I was there, he would mess with the Briscoes a lot. Like they had just like a quirky friendship and they would like prank and goof each other. Um, so yeah, he definitely enjoyed, enjoyed his time, but he wasn't there a whole lot when I was, but he did some commentating, but he was like in the meetings and stuff. So it's not like <coughs> I got to sit down and chat with him or anything like that, but um, but he really loved the boys and their style and their gimmick. So cool, dude. <laughs> definitely rounded out his, you know, you have that story of him being such a hard ass. Right. He definitely kind of mellowed at least or seen if sure. that was the case, he mellowed for us. So sure. at, the point, well, at the time that we got there, but yeah. That's my Randy. Jeff moment. Hardy. Jeff was quiet, but nice guy. Um I mean, he didn't talk much with me. He was just, you know, like, he was always just like, yes. And, and it's just so sweet. And I mean, he had a lot of closer friends. Um, Matt was very, a lot more of the vocal one. And Matt was on my show. So, and we worked with them. So he was a lot more goofy. And like, we had like a little bit more of a friendship. Um, Jeff was so much more reserved, but so nice. Um, yeah, so I... And then he had brought his wife out. I'd meet his wife sometimes when they would be at shows and she was so sweet and she'd put her arm around me and we'd like go off and kind of like do girly things or, or go off and talk girly stuff. Not too often, but um, very brief, but um, both really, really nice. It was Matt that was the vocal of the two. <laughs> so. Yeah, I didn't see, I, I haven't seen Jeff since night. I saw both of them like, like a month ago. I, I didn't see Jeff since 1999. I haven't seen Matt since wow. 2010. So yeah, it's great seeing those guys. Uh, Chris Jericho. I saw him in passing because he came back when he had the short little like John Bo John Bon Jovi hair. Um, so I didn't see him a whole lot, and I just remember him coming in, and I was like, "That hairstyle looks good on him." <laughs> um. And he was just in a suit and he looked great. And I don't remember his transition back in um, from that, but I didn't, I just remember that one time I saw him, he came at a show and I don't remember if he was signed or coming back or just visiting. I don't remember, but I just remember thinking he was shorter than I thought, but he was very handsome and he had just gotten his little Don Jovi haircut. So I was just like, that works for you. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> I was like, uh, what was the young Cody like? Cause he was there when you start, when you were on the roster, right? Cody was young, uh, <laughs> not in a bad way. He just is, is, has grown, has, has lived a life, has paid, paid his path. He's had things happen. His dad was very, very special place in his heart. 
Um, he never used his dad to any advantage. He always worked very, very hard, did his own work. Um, obviously consulted with his dad and, you know, has never got anything easily handed to him because of his dad. Um, but his dad was his heart. So, um, just a younger guy really kind of starting from the beginning and learning a lot with, along with us. Um, so it's great to see how he's has success in, you know, in life. And, you know, it, it's hard to think, I mean, he really cut his teeth going up to the main roster and, you know, thankfully he was around all the right people that, that molded him. And then he needed that time to step away. You know, sometimes as, as scary as that is, he did, the, he did step away. He took that risk went and was successful and was able to come back and he's where he's at. It's like, we all need that, that challenge in life. And I've always think of this meme I saw one day is um, that the meme said the teacher is always quietest during the test. And that has always settled resonated with me. And I feel like in that's comparable to, to his story, you know, like he was struggling I mean, I don't think he was struggling, but in his mind, he was struggling and he needed that challenge and walked away and it, it worked out for him. You know, it doesn't always, and it worked out for him and he worked hard and he has that work ethic and, you know, God, you know, sadly losing Dusty and, you know, he's a, from what I know, he's a different, different dude. And when I've seen him at shows, he's always been so gracious and hugged me and Hey, you know, have you met my wife? And, you know, has just, just been so kind. So you know, it's, it's the path in life that makes you who you are. And he's definitely been, you know, I knew him when he was younger and just starting out and not really knowing all of those aspects because he didn't get the pleasure of being on the Indies with us. He had a different path earlier, but, you know, to see where he's grown today, it's, it's worth it. And it's, it was exciting to see him fulfill that dream for his dad, you know, and to keep it, yeah. you know, so I'm happy for his successes for sure. <laughs> Was was Drew McIntyre on the roster when you were there? He was. Young? We worked against him and um, Dave Taylor. They paid. Remember, they pay, paired them with um, right. with Dave Taylor. So briefly, he was young too. Um, so he's def. He was definitely a lot more seasoned now. Clearly, obviously, um, mm -hmm. but he was shyer then. Um, definitely could see the potential and talent when he was working with Dave, but he was definitely a lot younger. He doesn't, you don't, you, you didn't see the confidence in him then that you see now for sure. Um, but just in, again, early stages of success. So, yeah. Anything you want to plug? Um, well, my, um, my Instagram DDC chick, um, is out there. I have, Twitter or X or whatever they're calling. So that's um, former Diva Cherry. So FMR Diva Cherry. Um, and I'm actually working on um, some new exciting business skills and events coming up. So keep an eye on my Instagram because I'm going to post it on my stories. Um, I'm kind of working on something really exciting I, I want to share soon. Um, so keep an eye on that. But um, other than that, those are the social medias I have. I don't have Facebook. Um, at least now. So, but yeah, I'd love to hear anybody who wants to reach out. You know, I've got photos, I've got some other stuff coming up. So yeah, 